Are you ready, Alana? I'm ready. You guys so I'm ready. My feet. Are you ready? Two thumbs up. Are you all ready? Yes. This doesn't sound ready. Are you really ready? All right. You've been waiting here patiently. Thank you for doing that. We always have to wait until about a quarter after to begin. So thanks for waiting. This is our community hot shop here at Jewelry Garden Glass. Hot shop is another word or term that we give the glass blowing studio. And I'll talk about the community part of it after we finish blowing glass. But just to give you an idea, we like to get back to the local art scene. Two safety rules before we begin. First, please do not cross the ropes. And then if a piece of glass or a tool lands on the ground past the barriers, please do not touch it. To be sure hot or both. Now that's never happened. I'm not worried about it happening today. Neither should you. But if today is the day, I'll see it happening and take care of it immediately. That's everything you need to know about safety. Today we are a team of three. I'd like to all welcome Alana to the stage. Thank you. They'll be the gaffer, and the gaffer is the lead glass blower, so they'll make all the decisions from the form to the colors that we use. As their lead assistant, we have Mikey. Please welcome Mikey. And my name is Sophie, and I'm mostly be talking to all of you. Oh, thank you. I'll be narrating everything that's happening. So the first order of business is gathering glass out of the heart of our studio, which is our glass melting furnace. Inside our furnace, there's a large ceramic bowl, a crucible, filled with molten clear glass. Now when they bring it out, the glass does not look clear. It's also glowing and moving. So the reason for the glow and the reason for the movement, if we stop turning, is the temperature. Our glass melting furnace is sitting at 2,175 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1190 Celsius. Right now they're starting to shape and cool the glass, getting it ready for a bubble, which will happen pretty quickly. Right now, watch the glass off the end of the pipe. There's glue into the pipe, trapping the air inside. Air is nowhere else to go except into the glass. And there it's slowly growing. Can you all see that expansion? There it is. We're now officially blowing glass. This initial bubble is what we call the starter bubble, and it's how all blown forms begin. Whether we're making something small, which that is enough glass for, or something larger. We do want to make something bigger for all of you, kind of on the scale of what you see up here on the stage. So to do that, we need more glass. Larger glass is made layer by layer, gather by gather. A gather being any time we get glass out of our furnace. To successfully gather, we have to start to let this bubble cool down or stabilize so that it can support the weight, the heat, and the movement of more glass. And as we are letting the glass get cool, you can see it's not really glowing or moving as much. Which is what we want. And cold is a relative term. It's still incredibly hot. We're not going to start touching it. But it does sound like cold glass, the way that we're all familiar with. So back into the furnace for our second layer, our second gather of glass. The glass really acts like honey when it's over 2,000 degrees. And now remember, this is clear. I know it doesn't look clear, but it is clear. However, however, we will not be clear for long. The lawn is going to start to add color. On our marber, the steel top table, we have two piles of crushed up colored glass laid out. We call that grit, F-R-I-T. And as long as the print is small enough, all we have to do to apply it is roll the hot glass into the color and it sticks. The reason the color is sticking is because it is absorbing that heat very quickly. But at this point, the print is still raised up. We haven't actually melted it in yet. The hot glass is just hot enough to get the frit to stick. So once they have their first layer of color, they'll show you that there is still texture. It's subtle because the frit they used was relatively small or finely crushed up. But to actually melt the color in, we have to use the reheating chamber. We also call it a quarry hole. It's really just a big barrel of fire. There is no glass in there except what's on the end of the pipe. It's at 230 degrees Fahrenheit, 1210 Celsius, so that we can get the glass back up to a good working temperature faster. So you'll see Alana in and out of there pretty frequently throughout the making of our vase, or gauze. We'll find out. So back into the heat. What the frit gives you is it gives you a spotted effect. You can see that on all the work up here on the stage. It's one of the most immediate ways of adding color to the glass. As long as the frit is small enough, it just absorbs that heat immediately. And the size of the frit will determine the size of the spots. So all of our glass, even this piece over here, while it appears to be one color, if you look closely after the demonstration, you will see those spots. So if you want one solid color, 
then swaths, we have to use what's called color bar, which is what these solid bars are, they're just solid bars of color. But now that we have added all of our color, Alana's using a wooden tool called the block to shape and cool the glass in a layer of steam. Mikey's showing you a larger one, they live in buckets of water. And now, a little bit more air down the pipe. Starting to stretch and elongate our bubble while we walk back over to the marker. This time, just to shape and cool the very tip of the bubble, which is going to freeze that area of the glass. So that when they go to blow, they can really direct where their air goes. So there's a little bit of thickness at the tip, and closer to the end of the pipe, it just got a little thinner. That's all a very strategic move. A lot of glass blowing is really just heat management, material placement, and turning that pipe. Now I have a question for all of you. Is there someone in the audience named Jack? No, no one? Must not be a very popular name. Well, this tool is called the Jacks. Um, it's one of our most versatile tools. I'd say it's the most popular tool for glass blowers. Well, we do a lot with the Jacks. But first, Alan is using the newspaper. That's nine sheets of the Seattle Times, folded up really specifically, and really allowed them to shape and cool the glass with their bare hands. And now, they're using the Jacks to incise a line, the jack line, back on with the newspaper. They're able to really pinch in this waste for our base. And then just making sure that the jack line is nice and constricted. So the tip of our bubble is what our base will sit on, and the jack line is how we will get, how, will we, how we will be able to access the inside of the base. We're working backwards right now. The jack line is also how we will separate our base from the pipe. It's a critical part of the process. Even if you're making something solid, you still need a jack line. Now that we have the jack line, we no longer have to get the entire bubble hot. We can really keep just below the jack line and work on that part. I need to glass a little differently. It's been our new normal for the past year. We call it the pocket cover. It allows us to blow glass for each other during a pandemic. Otherwise, before the pandemic, Mikey would just be blowing directly through the pipe, but can't do that right now. So now that we've inflated the glass, Alana is using the strap of the jacks to create that flat spot. Ready. And then they're now halfway finished. Mikey is going to make what we call the punty, P-U-N-T-Y. It's a solid pipe with a little bit of glass on the end of it, shaped up in a really specific way, and it will be what they attach to the bottom of the base, so that we can flip the glass around and start to open it up. This is a pretty tricky part in the glass blowing process. Throughout this entire process, nothing is ever guaranteed, but this is one of those times where a lot can go wrong if their temperatures aren't quite right. If Mikey is too cold or Alana is too cold, the punty will not stick and the glass will land on the stage. It's really exciting, but we try to avoid that. If Mikey's glass is too hot or if Alana is too hot, we'll know it at the end when we're trying to get the base off of the pipe. So here we go. If we have a successful bubble transfer, please give them a round of applause. If we do not have a successful bubble transfer, please give them a round of applause. So we're stuck together, hopefully, making sure it's positioned on there just right. Ready? It's a moment of truth. Are you all ready? Water fractures the glass. And then, a tap of the pipe. It's over there. Nicely done. Aces. It worked. It worked. Successful bubble transfer. So now, Mikey's giving the glass a flash, a quick burst of heat. This is Alana's last chance. Before that connection stabilizes and they start to address the opening. And now the opening of the base is pretty cold. It has to be cold enough for us to use water to fracture it off the blowpipe. So this next heat that they take is one of their longest heats. What's next? I'll turn it in a couple of Okay, cool. So, oftentimes when we break the glass off of the blow pipe, it's a little thicker from where we cut in the jack line. So, what the glass blower set means when they say trimming the glass is first grabbing the glass with tweezers, stretching, pulling the material, thinning the glass. And then it doesn't always break off very evenly, so we can also remove extra material with a tool called the straight shears. They cut the glass in a straight line. This next set of moves that Alana is going to do. They're pretty difficult to learn. It takes a lot of practice. All this is really difficult, and they're making it look very easy, but I think especially the straight shears are one of the harder tools to learn how to use because your hands are doing two different things at the same time. It's nothing like cutting paper. 
and you're doing it all while the glass is still hot enough to cut it. The glass is relatively thin at this point, so it's heating up pretty quickly and cooling down pretty quickly. If you run out of heat when you're cutting the glass, that sets you up for a world of hurt. So, going in for the tweeze, tweezing the glass out, now we're going to go into the cut. Check this out. Putting the glass, right these on hand to make sure that the glass is going to touch back down on their hand. Just like that, they cut the glass. Nicely done. So now, it is sharp there, so we're going to go back into the heat, smooth that out, and then also get it hot so that we can continue to open it up. Mikey got the blades of the jacks nice and hot again, and waxy. If you ever see any flames coming off of the glass, it's from the beeswax. It will not harm a lot, but it just shows you how hot the glass really is. It's a good indicator. Mikey's also ready with two paddles. One for to hold on the opening of the gate so it's nice and parallel to the bottom. And also, he has a paddle to shield pull on his arm from any radiant heat. A really common question that we get asked of here is how often we burn ourselves. Truthfully, it's not that often anymore. When you're first learning, you definitely burn yourself a little bit more frequently, cut yourself a little bit more frequently, because you're figuring out what's hot and what's not hot. Now, when we burn ourselves, it's not for touching the wrong thing, but it's more so from the heat coming off the glass, and that is unavoidable. We're going to use another tool. They're called the Partrophies. They're basically like the jacks, the tool that Alana has in her hand, but rather than having metal blades, the Partrophies have wooden blades also dunked in water, and we can use the part piece to further shape the glass. Kind of like the newspaper, wet wood or dry wood, they're both really nice materials to use because they don't cool the glass as rapidly as metal tools do. So we'll be able to work with the glass a little longer. And we're going to use the part piece to kind of squeeze in the neck of our base. Now's a great time to watch what their hands are doing. Their left hand is their motor, and then their right hand's working with all the tools. Okay. What do you think? Do you like it, Alana? I love it. They, they love it. Do you guys love it? Yeah. So the final destination for this vase, it's not quite done yet. It's got to go through a slow cooling cycle called annealing, which happens in our silver box, the top one. That's what we call the annealing oven. It sits at 950 degrees Fahrenheit, 510 Celsius, which is a happy resting temperature for the glass. Hot enough, the glass will not crack cold enough it will not change shape. And then at the end of the day, when it's when we're finished working, it's on a program to slowly start to cool the glass down. Slow cooling cycle called annealing. And what that does is it just gets rid of any and all stress, makes the glass really strong and durable. So Mike gets a stick. You know, it's the simplest tools up here that make the best tools. And then a little bit of water, tap the pipe, comes off just like that. Uh, it's a little sharp. So a little 3,000 degree flame takes care of that really quickly, and now we will cut our fingers in the morning. And we have a beautiful vase made by Alana and Mikey. Nice, nice, nice. Beautiful. Let's give them one more round of applause. Thank you all for contributing here. It's really good to see everyone. Uh, one thing about the community part for Glass One Studio is that everything that we make on the stage eventually goes for sale at the Space Needle gift shop. It's in the base of the space needle, so it's free to get in, and you can find our work in a section labeled Community Hot Shop. That is what we are. And 100% of the proceeds go back into the community to support Seattle Public Schools, a lot of arts organizations like the Pilchuck Glass School, Pratt Fine Arts Center, Artist Trust, a lot of organizations that are programs for youth and emerging artists. Check it out if you're interested. We're going to answer questions if you have any. Last demo of the day is at 5.15. Stay safe and enjoy the rest of your evening or day. Afternoon.